Hey, I'm Gina. I'm a registered dental hygienist and you're watching Burst TV. <sighs> Today we're talking about synthetic enamel. What the heck is that? Well, let's start from the beginning, have a quick chat about what enamel is in the first place. Enamel is the hardest substance in the human body and it makes up the outermost layer of our teeth. Enamel protects the inner layers of our teeth, which are more susceptible to tooth decay, sensitivity, and infection. Basically, you're gonna miss it when it's gone. So how can you lose enamel? Well, let's start with tooth decay. The bacteria in our mouth feeds off sugars and carbohydrates in our diets and creates an acidic environment in our mouths for about 20 minutes after we eat or take a sip of a sugary or acidic drink. During this time, the enamel in our mouths is weakened if this happens often enough, that acid that is created starts slowly making a hole in our enamel. The result, enamel wears away in an area of our tooth, and once it reaches the inner layer called dentin, it's past the point of no return. And I hate to be the one to say it, but no, oil pulling won't fix it, people. You're gonna need to see your dentist once the cavity gets to this point. If you don't, it can actually get bigger over time and even reach the pulp of your tooth, causing pain and infection. The other way you could lose enamel is through erosion. Erosion is a product of a prolonged acidic environment in our mouths, but it's more of a generalized wear instead of a one pinpoint area like a cavity. Here are a few situations that can lead to erosion. Frequent vomiting or chronic acid reflux, teeth grinding, drinking a lot of soft drinks, fruit juices, and even acidic fruit, eating sugary foods, chewing on lemons, Erosion can happen more slowly than tooth decay, but still has consequences like sensitivity to sweets and temperature, teeth that look more see-through or translucent, and it could also lead to fractured teeth and increased tooth decay. Okay, so now that we know how we lose enamel, let's talk about how it's replaced. Throughout history, dentists have replaced lost enamel with beeswax, not sure how long that would last, amalgam fillings, and most commonly used now, resin, aka composite fillings. Composite fillings last for a few years, but they don't even come close to the real thing. Our natural enamel is strong enough to take on daily chewing forces for decades, but also elastic enough to not crack during those same daily forces our jaw puts on our teeth. It is such an incredible substance that it has not been able to be replicated. Until recently, when scientists have developed a new material that's harder and more durable than the real thing. It's made from wires of hydroxyapatite, the same as natural enamel, but they're encased in a flexible metal-based coating. This soft coating is what sets it apart from previous attempts at making enamel because it makes this material less likely to snap under pressure. Natural enamel has a magnesium-rich coating, while this new synthetic enamel is coated with zirconium oxide, which is strong and biocompatible meaning it's not toxic for us. Though the new material's wires don't have the same exact 3D structure that natural enamel has, the parallel wires of synthetic enamel are a lot closer to the real thing than previous attempts. Zirconium oxide is also a common material currently used in dental crowns with excellent results, which puts the synthetic enamel at an even greater likelihood that we could see it used instead of composite fillings in the dental office at some point in the future. In measuring against enamel, scientists found the synthetic version actually outperformed its natural counterpart in a few different areas. Stiffness, hardness, strength, viscoelasticity, and toughness. We don't know yet if and when this new synthetic enamel will be available as an option to use as dental filling material, but prospects are high that it could actually work, and not just for teeth. It could be used to make pacemakers or to reinforce crumbling bone in those with severe osteoporosis. But before it can be used in a clinical environment, this new material will have to be affordable, able to be mass produced, and of course, clinically tested for safety and efficacy. I don't know about you, but for me, the idea of having a dental material that will last longer sounds pretty awesome because if your fillings last longer, that means you'll be in the dental chair a lot less. So it's a win-win. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below. And as always, like and subscribe to Bruce TV. We have a new video coming your way every week.